Hello and welcome to the fourth episode of Jumbo Athletes of the Week. I'm Paul Sweeney, Director of Athletic Communications for the Jumbos. And this is where we talk to the Jumbo student athletes who have been exceptional in their performances during the past week. Today, we're fortunate to have Brendan McFall from the baseball team, a pitcher, and also a goalie from the women's lacrosse team, Molly La Liberty. We're going to bring in Brendan first. He pitched a two-hit shutout on Sunday in a must-win game for the Jumbos against Trinity College to give the Jumbos the NESCAC East pennant and the right to host the conference championship series coming up this weekend against Amherst. Brendan, thanks for joining us. Hi, Paul. Great to be here. So uh, you were tremendous on Sunday, taking the mound and throwing a two-hitter with nine strikeouts and a shutout as the Jumbos won over Trinity, won nothing to win the NESCAC East and clinch the right to host the conference championship series against Amherst this coming weekend. So what'd you have working on Sunday? What was the key to being successful that day? So definitely first off and most important, I would say that I established my fastball pretty well. Um, I was able to command it in the strike zone. I attacked the hitters uh, and it also happened to have a lot of movement on Sunday. And generally speaking, when your fastball is moving a lot with pretty good velo, you're going to be able to stay off the barrel and make the hitters uh, hit into a lot of weak contact. And that's what happened uh, on Sunday. Um, I also commanded my my slider pretty well. Got a lot of uh, swings and misses and called strikes. And when you when you have two pitches that are on like I had, um, it's going to be a long day for the hitters. And I think most importantly, what I did was I trusted my fielders. I knew that if the ball was hit to them, they were going to make the plays. And so that gave me the uh, the confidence to just keep throwing strikes, let them put the ball in play, and let my fielders take care of the rest. Brendan, you've been a part of what has been a very good starting staff this season with Michael Volgendi and Cameron May Mayer. In what ways do you guys help each other during the week? Yeah, so I would say we're definitely always competing with each other, um, whether that's trying to hit spots while we're having a catch or pushing each other to make difficult plays during fielding drills. Um, and I think that that competition builds uh, more confidence and it just pushes us to be better during the week. And then on top of that, we're always discussing um, what we did that worked uh, like during the week or after a game. We talk about the hitters tendencies, what they did, what we did against them that worked well. And then even on top of that, I think the guys who maybe aren't making their impact in the box score, but are still coming to practice every day, coming to the games, sitting in the stands, cheering, giving all their energy to the team. I think that they're just as important, if not more so, than those of us that are on the field uh, making the plays and stuff. So Amherst comes in for the NESCAC Championship Series this weekend. What are the things that the team has done as a whole this year that have led to success and will be important again this weekend? Yeah, so all year I'd say we've been we've been focusing on doing the little things right, um, whether that's just making routine plays in the field, not making any mistakes on the bases, running ourselves out of innings, um, and for the most part the bats have been have been great all year. Obviously they weren't you know as on on Sunday as we would have liked, but I'm sure that with the week of practice uh, upcoming, we'll be able to get back where we need to be. Um, and on top of that, the pitching has been phenomenal, obviously having won three of the last four NESCAC Pitcher of the Week awards. And I think that when you have pitching and defense, you're going to win a lot of baseball games. Um, to speak on this weekend, the, the major thing that our coach has emphasized, Coach Casey, is that we need baseball players, not heroes. So that means we don't want guys going up to the plate trying to hit 12 run home runs, taking the biggest swings of their lives. We want to work counts, tire the pitchers out, and trust the guy behind us to, to get a hit once we get on base. And we want to get on them early. We want to not stop scoring runs. We want to score all game. And obviously, as the pitching staff, we just want to keep shutting down offenses. When you're not giving up runs, it's tough to lose games. So. Mm -hmm. And lastly, can you let us know what you're studying at Tufts and what else you might have going on off the field? Yeah, so I'm a, a psychology major. Uh, my intent is to go into sports psychology because I really want to be able to help uh, people improve their mental, the mental side of their game, which is something that I emphasize greatly and I work on every day. Um, outside of that is um, a lot of focus on schoolwork, uh, training and practices. I want to give as much attention to my studies as I do to, to baseball. Um, and I mean, with the pandemic, obviously there's not too much going on outside of that. So it's just trying to be 
as safe as I can be so we can we can stay on the baseball field and get the grades up where they need to be while we play. Great. Well, thanks very much for joining us, Brendan, and congrats on your achievement. Thank you so much. My pleasure. And now we're going to bring in Molly. She is a Jumbo Athlete of the Week for the second week in a row. On Saturday in the NESCAC Championship game against Wesleyan, a 14-3 Jumbo victory, giving them the first NESCAC title in program history. Molly saved 13 out of the 16 shots that she saw. That's an 8-1-3 save percentage. She saved 9 out of 10 shots in the second half. Molly, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So, I mean, it's a little bit of a different year, but how cool is it to be the NESCAC champion? It's it's an amazing feeling. I mean, I think, like you said, it's a different year, but it's really a, a huge testament to, like, the dedication and work this team has put in. Like, it's been a crazy year, but we still, like, stuck together and, and came through it stronger. I think this is something that, like, the entire program has been working toward before I even got here. And and it feels absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal to be part of this milestone. So I'm, I'm just really grateful to be part of this team, part of this achievement. So you've been getting a lot of recognition, well-deserved, but tell me about the defensive leaders who play on the field in front of you. Yeah, I mean, I think, I, I genuinely feel like I wouldn't be able to do any of this without um, the defense in front of me. And I really can't say enough good things about the defenders on my team. Um, just to name a few, Lindsay Erickson has been absolutely phenomenal this year, um, both in her play and in her leadership presence as well. Um, Emma Tomlinson, another senior, has also stepped up huge this year. She, she really just shuts down every assignment she has. Um, Maddie Lehan is in my year. She's a junior and I love playing with her. She's like really dynamic and intuitive on defense. So it's super exciting. And then Becca Gable is a sophomore. She's also in that like starting four and she's been absolutely crushing it too. So she fits right in with our defensive unit. I mean, there's just so many, diff so many superlatives on um, our defensive unit. And I just feel really, really lucky to um, have such a strong unit in front of me. Like I feel like the luckiest goalie in the country. Now, Molly, you're certainly not afraid to get involved in the clear game for the Jumbos, and you make a lot of long passes. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Is that something you practice? How is your accuracy so good in that regard? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think definitely throughout my lacrosse career, um, the clearing aspect of the game has been, like, a tumultuous one. Um, it's it's definitely something that's taken a lot of, like, practice and um and time and effort to get accurate. But I, th I think I've, I'm really grateful for like all my coaches and teammates who've helped me the past couple of years in like the decision-making process. I, I think really that's the hardest part of the clearing game is deciding like when to throw that long ball and when to just hit like the easy outlet on the side. And, and I think that's not always something I've been very good at. And like my coaches here at Tufts, like especially Coach Shoot have been super helpful in just like guiding me through that. And then lastly, can you tell us about your path to Tufts and how you decided to come here? Yeah, sure. Um, so when I started to get more serious about um, wanting to play college lacrosse and really looking into different recruiting paths, I learned about the NESCAC and with like the high level of academics combined with like really good lacrosse, um, the balance of the two helped me realize that this was the conference that I wanted to play in. Um, and, and once I started looking at the NESCAC, I, I pretty quickly um, started leaning toward Tufts. I mean, from day one, I had a really great rapport with Coach Shute, and I think that was really influential in my decision. But the campus, the, um, the energy on the team, the team culture, and I, I'm also, I also live in Newburyport, Massachusetts. So being close to home, that was all really attractive for me. And, and I think it, it just winded up being like the, the perfect school for me. So, yeah. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Molly, and congrats on your achievement. Thank you, and thank you for having me. That's our Jumbo Athletes of the Week feature. Thanks for watching. Join us next week.